Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be your host for our latest Korean Builds video. And it will cover the latest trending builds for patch 12.12. Whether they're completely new builds or strategic optimizations for certain situations, we're here to update you guys on the latest player innovations. Make sure you to subscribe for the latest updates and other videos like this, and let's get the video started. As always, we'll begin with the top lane builds. Our very first is for Zac Top. While tanks still aren't as popular as we would have anticipated, they're slowly growing on players. One thing is clear, the ones that are succeeding are the ones that can frontline and deal damage. Makes sense, it's solo queue after all, and you need to kill your opponents to consistently carry games. This is an aggressive setup that trades out Summoner Flash for Ignite. Since Zack does have his E and even his ultimate to get him out in a pinch, Flash isn't necessary. Instead, you can take Ignite to surprise your foes with some extra damage, but more importantly, the healing reduction. First runes, Take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Revitalize, Adaptive Force, a Defensive Rune, and Health. Health scales ridiculously well with Zack, so you're going to miss out on a lot if you choose not to run it. His items are Sunfire Aegis, Ionian Boost of Lucidity, Demonic Embrace, Thornmail, Spirit Visage, and Zhonya's Hourglass. This build provides plenty of damage, but it's far from a glass cannon build. Any players will have to work hard to take Zack out of the picture, but can't ignore him either, as he has enough power to take out enemy carries if left unintended, especially with the addition of Ignite in the late game. Another champion that we're seeing more of in the top lane is Sejuani. More tanks, but oddly enough, it's junglers migrating into the top lane. Like Zack, Sejuani exhibits impressive damage output, but what she's really known for is her insane lockdown. If she has a melee jungler or a shapeshifter like Nidalee or Elise, the top lane ganks are absolutely free. It's a guaranteed stun at that point, and aggressive junglers can especially benefit from having Sejuani as their top laner. For runes, take Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Attack Speed, a Defensive Rune, and Health. For her items, build Frostfire Gauntlet, Defensive Boots, Winter's Approach, Demonic Embrace, Thornmail, and Force of Nature. Again, this is another build that provides ample damage output, and the addition of Frostfire Gauntlet makes Sejuani an even more impressive crowd control machine. Before moving on, I also want to mention our coaches at ProGuides.com. If you're interested in learning how to carry with tanks or just be better adjusted to the current meta, our expert coaches can definitely help you take the game to the next level. That's it for the top lane build, so we'll put them back up on the screen for you all. Take one last look, save them, and let's move on to the jungle next. With Assassins weaker than before, one common trend as of late is that many have begun taking Bruiser itemization. Their high AD ratios make use of that AD that fighter items provide, but also provide that tankiness that they need to survive if they're unable to successfully burst down their target. Instead, they'll use the extra health to get out and wait for an opportunity to re-engage. In Kane's case, it's surprising to find that players are doing this even with his assassin form. Instead of opting out for his red form, plenty of players have started taking Shadow Assassin for the extra burst damage and mobility, but are still choosing to run fighter itemization. He still deals high damage, but takes advantage of a very different set of perks. First runes, Take Conqueror, Trav, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Revitalize, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. For his items, build Gore Drinker, Ionian Boost of Lucidity, Man Immune, Death's Dance, Black Cleaver, and Maul of Amortius. Again, this build provides a ton of damage, ability haste, and even mana to ensure that you can still apply the same pressure an assassin would. In addition, you gain a bunch of extra defensive stats to work with. Our next jungle build is for Trundle. He's a solid frontliner, duelist, and anti-tank. Wearing multiple hats, Trundle is a great addition to one team and an annoying hindrance to the other. Especially if the enemy team has only one dedicated frontliner, Trundle's ultimate is invaluable as his team can quickly shred through them and quickly move on to the squishier enemies next. Like mentioned, he's a solid 1v1 fighter as well. He deals good damage with his Q's low cooldown. Since it steals AD and also resists his attack timer, it definitely adds up. First runes, Take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Revitalize, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. His items are Frostfire Gauntlet, Defensive Boots, Blade of the Ruined King, Death Stance, Knight's Vow, and Spirit Visage. The bonus healing that Spirit Visage grants is ridiculously powerful in the late game, especially since the tanks that heal ult will provide him plenty of HP to take. That's it for the jungle build, so we'll put them up on the screen again for you guys to take note of. Next, let's move on to the mid lane builds. Moving out of the bottom lane, we have a new electrifying mid laner in town. Zeri Mid is quickly making her presence known. Rather than focusing on AD like we know her for, Zeri Mid instead builds AP, taking advantage of her passive W and ultimate. Given that her passive has a 90% AP ratio at full charge, she's able to deal an insane amount of burst damage to start off fights. Even her uncharged passive deals solid damage against low health foes, making it easier for her to finish them off. That being said, let me run you guys through the build. A lot of players are running Summoner Teleport. This helps her scale up since it provides a safety net in case she gets ganked or takes a bunch of damage during the laning phase. For runes, take First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Approach Velocity, Eyeball Collection, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. It's clear from this that there's a big focus on income. First Strike, Futures Market, and Treasure Hunter allow Zeri to hit her item power spikes fast. 
Thus, she's able to quickly scale up and become a major threat to the enemy team. For her items, build Mana Immune, Sorcerer's Shoes, Luden's Echo, Shadow Flame, Rabadon's Death Cap, and either Void Staff or Magi's. If you're winning hard early, you can build a Magi's earlier. Following up in the mid lane is Bard. Bard mid lane. <laughs> Who would have thought? The idea behind playing Bard mid is that he applies a ton of pressure with his roams. That's what he's basically designed to do anyway, and as a result, his team basically gets a second jungler. While he may not have the best wave clear early, picking up some chimes changes this towards the early mid game. In addition, Bard deals a disgusting amount of damage early on, making him a formidable opponent in the mid lane. With his infinite scaling, Bard also remains a powerful threat in the late game. On that topic, let me ask you our question of the day. Do you like that League of Legends has champions with infinite scaling? I think it adds variety to the game and it's nice to have, but unfortunately a lot of those champions want to see competitive play, since they do put their team at a disadvantage early on. Let me know your answers in the comments down below and let's continue on with the video. Let me run you guys through that build for Bard now. For his runes, take Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Celerity, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. His items are Nasher's Tooth, Sorcerer's Shoes, Luden's Echo, Zhonya's Hourglass, Rabadon's Death Cap, and either Rage Blade or Lich Bane. You can choose the last item based on whether or not you want more DPS or burst damage. That covers the mid lane builds, so make sure you take another look at the screen for a quick recap of them. Next, let's move on to the bottom lane. While it might seem strange to hear, Nico bot lane is beginning to pick up some more play. Known for her infamous on-hit AD builds, Nico makes great use of her W's innate damage output. In addition, she brings a solid amount of lockdown and can even peel for herself during teamfights. Players typically run exhaust on her, making sure that divers need to think twice. The slow from exhaust also makes it easier for her to land her root, and even her ultimate if her enemies choose to run from the fight. To make the most out of the on-hit effects, you're gonna run Lethal Tempo Keystone. This is a build that focuses on attack speed for damage output, so make sure you take note of these runes. Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Taste of Blood, Treasure Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Blade of the Rune King, Wit's End, and Guardian Angel. This build provides a moderate amount of defensive stats as well, which is great for considering the durability buffs that we received a few patches ago. Like we mentioned earlier, Exhaust is great for stopping those divers and with the stats that you get from Wit's End and Guardian Angel, you're usually able to survive any Assassin or Bruiser as long as they're not ridiculously fed. For a support build, we want to feature Heimerdinger. Even prior to the recent buffs, he was starting to see more play with the setup. The idea is to use First Strike and Spell Thieves to access consistent income, and eventually scale up to be that annoying AP carry that players hate dealing with. He's able to pressure his opponents on stop and gain extra gold while doing so. First runes take First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Absolute Focus, Gathering Storm, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. For items, build Spell Thieves, Everfrost, Sorcerer Shoes, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Zhonya's Hourglass, and Rabadon Seth Cap. Once you have Everfrost finish, it makes it much riskier for enemies to even try to gank you, since you're able to stall out and let your turrets do some disgusting amount of damage. That's it for the bottom lane, so we'll put up those builds on the screen for you guys one more time. Finally, we'll wrap up the video with builds for a duo that you can take note of. Our final builds for this patch are for a top jungle duo, Singed and Skarner. They bring disgusting amount of CC and pick potential to the table. They sort of do the same thing, they run at their enemies, pick them off, and get the ball rolling. Luckily, this is a great strength to have in solo queue where players are often found out of position. With their CC chain, there's no escape and even if carries think they're safe, it's not too hard for either of them to run in and force a scramble to start. For Singe's setup, take the runes Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Double Adaptive Force, and Health. His items are Rally's Crystal Scepter, Boots of Swiftness, Leandry's Anguish, Sonya's Hourglass, Demonic Embrace, and Gargoyle's Stoneplate. For Skarner setup, take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Health. His items are Frostfire Gauntlet, Defensive Boots, Mana Immune, Death Stance, Thorn Mail, and Force of Nature. Those are the final builds for the video, so make sure you take a look at our last build recap. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like always, share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Feel free to also expand the description to find a link to join our Discord. You'll be the first to hear about any events or giveaways that we host in the future. Best of luck in your games, and you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.